Hello everyone. So this is the lecture number one of Indian Polity, and this series will be discussing all the important questions chapter wise that you will find in the Lakshmi Kant book. So in every lecture, we try to cover the important MCQs of each chapter, and today's chapter is the constitutional development of India. So if you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe this channel and do like and share. So the first question is, which among the following was the first attempt by the British Parliament to regulate the affairs of English East India Company? Charter Act 1833, the Regulating Act 1773, Charter Act of 1813, the Pitch India Act 1784. So question is asking about that which one, which act was the first one by British India Company to regulate the affairs of English East India Company. So the answer will be option B, that is the Regulating Act of 1773. So Regulating Act 1773 was the first step taken by the British Parliament to control and regulate the affairs of East India Company in India. So, Potomote, Sabotke Potome, Regulating Act of 1773, British Parliament, East India Company Affairs Kini Control Corporation. So, let's see about some important provisions of this Act. First one is the political and administrative functions of the company were recognized for the first time. Second, it designated the governor of Bengal as the governor general of Bengal and created an executive council of four members to assist him. The first such governor general was Lord Warren Hastings. So, it is very important that the regulating act of 1773 governor of Bengal, governor of general, governor general of Bengal, uh, Logote at the executive council where four members were there to assist him. And the question may be coming that who was the first governor general of Bengal? Who was the first governor general of Bengal? And he was Lord Warren Hastings. So this is the this is according to the uh, 1773 Act. Then it provided for the establishment of Supreme Court of Calcutta. This question was also asked many times that which act has uh, means provided for the uh, provided uh, establishment of Supreme Court in India first time, that is 1773 Regulating Act. Then it prohibited the servants of the company from engaging any in, in any private trade. So this is also important point. Then so the so if we talk about the important um, parts or important uh, provisions of 1773 regulating act, the first one is that it designated governor of Bengal as governor general of Bengal. That uh, first one, first governor general of Bengal was Warren Hastings. Supreme Court was established, and then the, it prohibited the servants of the company to engage in any private trade. Now coming to the second question, which one of the following acts designated the governor general of Bengal as the governor general of India. Palu, governor of Bengal, governor general of Bengal, regulating act of 1773. But, the, but now, concentrate on the question. Question was asking about that which act designated the governor general of Bengal as the governor general of India. So go through the options. First one is Regulating Act of 1770. First, uh, second one is Charter Act of 1833. Charter Act of 1853. Governor of India Act 1990. The answer will be Charter Act of 1833. So please remember that Governor General of Bengal was designated as Governor General of India by Charter Act of 1833. Another question I have is who was the governor general of India? Who was the first governor general of India? So he was Lord William Bentinck. Then I get to the first governor 
general of Bengal was Warren Hastings. Similarly, govern, first governor general of India was whom? Lord William Bentick. And as per which act? Charter Act of 1833. So guys, I'm discussing, I'm including important questions that might be asked in the exam for this MCQ. So it doesn't mean that one, uh, there are only 10 or nine MCQs, but for this one MCQ, we are actually discussing for five different MCQs. Now, what are the other provisions of the Charter Act of 1833? Uh, let's go through them. The first thing, the English East India Company ceased to be a commercial agency in India. In other words, it would function hereafter as the political agent for the, for the crown. It, uh, East India Company now work as a political agent for the crown. It deprived the governor general, governor of Bombay and Madras for of their legislative powers, the governor general of India was given exclusive legislative powers of the entire British India. So, governor of Bombay or governor of Madras or power in all of Kumbhukan because all the powers, all the exclusive powers were given to the governor general of India. Now, let's come to the next question. Consider the following statements about the Morley Minto reforms. Look, we have covered. <clears throat> Regulating Act of 1773, then 18, uh, 33 Act. now come to the Morley Minter reforms. Now, we need to consider the following statements regarding Morley Minter reforms. First one, provincial legislative councils came to have non-official majority. Second, the discussion on budget including supplementary questions was allowed for the first time. Third, Muslims were given separate lectures. Now you need to tell that which statements, among these three statements, which statements are correct. Go to the option, answer will be all the statements are correct. So, Igutekinye, Morley Minto Reform, that is Indian Council Act of 1909. Remember, Indian Council Acts 1909 is also known as Morley Minto reforms. Morley Minto reforms was named after the Secretary of State for India, John Morley, Mane Morley Asil, Secretary of State, and Minto Asil, Viceroy. So, Indian Council Act 1909 is known as Morley Minto reforms. Secretary was India, uh, John Morley, uh, Morley and Viceroy was Lord Minto. Now, what were the important provisions? First, the act enlarged the size of the legislative councils, both at central and provincial level. The number of members in the central legislative council was raised from 16 to 60. The number in the um, provincial legislative council was not uniform. So central legislative council of members of Hoinkha Kulor Prakhati Koisile, so the provincial legislative council of Enuka Kunu Nasil, uniform Nasil. Second, it increased the functions of the legislative council at both levels. It empowers the members to discuss the budget and move resolutions. Before it was approved finally, Members were also given right to ask supplementary questions and move resolutions. So, both important facts say 1909 or Morley Minto reform or Indian Act uh, 1909, yet key hold the budget or before discussion curriculum allow for a whistle members. This act for the first time allowed the Association of Indians with the Executive Council of Viceroy. So, Indians were also included or involved. Then who was the first one who had been involved? So Satendra, remember, you can note down also, Satendra Prasad Sinha. Satendra Prasad Sinha became the first Indian to join the Viceroy's Executive Council as the law member. I'm repeating again, Satendra Prasad Sinha became the first Indian to join the Viceroy's Executive Council. Okay, it introduced the system of separate electorate for Muslim community. Question may be asked that who, who was the first act who has included or who has introduced separate electorate? So answer will be 1909 act that is Morley Minto reforms. Under this, Muslim members were to be elected only by 
Muslim voters. Thus, the act led to the legislation of communalism, and Lord Minto came to be known as the father of communal electorate. Because we have seen that this act, that is Morley Minto, Morley was the secretary, Minto was the uh, viceroy. So because of this act, Muslims were given separate electorate, so the communalism been, been included. So that's why this Indian Council Act 1909 was the first act or became the first act to include separate electorate and Minto, Lord Minto was known as the father of communal electorate. I'm repeating again, Lord Minto came to be known as the father of communal electorate. Let's come to the next question. So India, we have included, uh, we have uh, discussed about the 1773 Regulating Act, 1833 Charters Act, and then Indian Council Act 1909, that is Morley Minto reform. Now let's come to the Montego Samsport reform. Which of the following statements are true about Montego Samsport? reforms. It was declared for the first time that gradual introduction of responsible government is the objective. Central and provincial subjects were separated for the first time. Both bicameralism and direct elections were introduced for the first time. So who, which were the answer means correct sentence you need to choose. The answer will be all of the above. So let's see about the act. Government of India Act 1919. 19. Unois Government of India Act 1919 is also known as Montego Sandsport Reforms. This was passed by British Parliament to further expand the participation of Indians in the government of India, and it is known as Montego Sandsport Reforms or Montfort Reform. So Montego Sandsport Reforms was also known as Montfort Reforms. Here, Edwin Montek was the secretary and uh, Lord Samsport was the viceroy. And okay, Morley Minto, Morley as a secretary, Minto as a viceroy. Similarly, UNESCO UNESCO Sonor, uh, Government of India Act 1919, that is Montego Samsport reforms. Montego was the secretary and Samsport was the viceroy. Now, what were the important provisions? Each of them you have to remember. Important provisions of this Montego Samsport reform 19, 0, 1919. First one, British government declared for the first time that its objective was the gradual introduction of responsible government in India. So responsible government on other time called by providing separate elections for Sikh, Indian, Christians, Anglo-Indians, and European. This act again extended and consolidated the communal representation. So communal representation now been again extended from Muslim to include Sikhs, Christian, Anglo-Indians, and Europeans. Then it relaxed the central control of other provinces by separating the central and provincial subjects. So separation of central and provincial subjects happened here. Then it further divided the provincial subjects into two parts, transferred and reserved. The transport subjects were to be administered by the governor with the aid of minister responsible to the legislative council, while the reserve subjects, on the other hand, were to be administered by governor. This dual scheme of governance was known as diarchy. So diarchy was first time introduced with the help of Montego Samsport reforms, that is Indian Council Act of 1919 responsible government okay so what actually mean by diarchy it means two subjects were there that is transport and reserve transport by governor with the help of or with the aid of minister and reserves only for the governor then it also separated provincial budgets from the central budget and authorized provincial legislatures to enact their own budgets it introduced for the first time bicameralism and direct election in the country. So bicameralism also, directly, don't confuse directly with bicameralism. Directly means two subjects. Now bicameralism, two different uh, parts are there for which elections being established. Okay, for which elections being sorry, conducted. So bicameralism was first introduced in India with the help of this Montego Sanspon report. The act provided for the establishment of a Public Service Commission in India for the first time. This question also might be asked that which acts established Public Service Commission in India for the first time? 
that was Indian Council Act of 1919, that is Montego Sam's Form Reform. So that is about Montego Sam's Form Reform. Now coming to the next question. Which of the following acts separated legislative and executive functions of the Governor General Council for the first time? 1773, 1830, 1853, and Government of India Act 1919. So answer will be 1853. Charter Act of 1853. It separated for the first time the legislative and executive functions of the Governor General of Council. So okay, Zana, legislative is a different thing and executive is a different thing. Now, this legislative and executive executive functions were first time separated with the help of Charter Act of 1850 to remember it. Next question. Let's see uh, some provisions of it. it. That is Charter Act of 1850 provided for the addiction of six members called legislative councillors of the council, the council. In other words, it established a separate Governor General's Legislative Council, which came to be known as Indian Legislative Council. Now coming to the next question, which of the following are the features of regulating Act of 73? We have covered this, right? It provided for the establishment of Supreme Court of India at Calcutta. You know that that is correct. It created Executive Council for Governor General of Bengal. It made governors of Bombay and Madras president subordinate to the Governor General of uh, Bengal. And it established Board of control for managing political affairs. So go to the option, which one the correct? So only one to tier correct. The Regulating Act of 1773 was the first act or first step taken by the British Parliament to control and regulate the affairs of East India Company. Important provision we have already covered. Still I am revising it. The political and administrative functions of the company were recognized for the first time designated the governor of general or governor of bengal as governor general of bengal and created an executive council of four members to assist him assist him then the first such governor general was lord warren hastings historical background of indian constitution that is warren hastings provided for the establishment of supreme court of calcutta 78 7 in, uh, in 1774 it provided the servants of the company from uh, means investigated uh, their their involvement in any uh, private comp uh, trade. It made the governors of Man my Bombay and Madras presidency subordinate to the governor general of Bengal. Okay. So, you can see the 1730s, 1773 Act of Provisions. Now, Peach India Act, introduced by British Parliament, uh, means Parliament so with the help of British Prime Minister William Pitt, was passed in 1784. Peach India Act 1784 passed What are the important provisions? Let's go through it. Important provisions of Peach India Act 1784, which was passed by Prime Minister, then by Prime Minister Lord Pitt, were first, it distinguished between the commercial and political functions of the company. It allowed the court of directors to manage the commercial affairs. Mane commercial or political function can separate Korea or court of directors commercial affairs can It created a new body, board of control to manage the political affairs. So court of directors for the commercial affairs management and board of control for political affairs management. So this is done with the help of Act, India Act 1784. Companies' territories in India were for the first time called British processions in India. This question may be asked that which act actually allowed to call the companies' territories in India as British possession of in India, that is Pitch India Act 1784. Okay. Now, next question Pitch India Act is clear. Uzi Paisa Sake, Akueva repeat question, which India Act 1784 main important provision as commercial and political functions separation, court of directors for commercial affairs management and board of control for political affairs management, and British position in India was first time recognized with the help of this act. Next, 
what were the salient features of the government of india act 1935 very very important question option one provincial autonomy diarchy at the center abolition of the diarchy in provinces so answer will be all of them that is the so government of india act 1935 was a big step towards the establishment of responsible government in india right what are the important provision important provisions were it introduced provincial autonomy provincial autonomy and remove diarchy in the provinces right diarchy con authority pelo asle provincial opera provincial opera and provincial autonomy was introduced it provided for the establishment of an all india federation consisting of provinces and princely states as in it again very important uh, question government of india act 1935 provided for the establishment of an all india federation consisting of provinces and princely states as unit next the act divided the powers between center and provinces by three lists federal lists provincial lists and concurrent lists tinta list of power kini bhag kara hoisile federal list provincial list and concurrent list now it provided for the diarchy at the center central diarchy anisile federal subjects were divided into reserve subjects and transfer subjects but this provision never into operation residuary powers were given to the viceroy right so this was again important act because you know that our constitution maximum portions being taken from uh, government of india act 1935 so i am revising again the important uh, provisions of 1935 government of india act first provincial autonomy is being introduced and directly was removed from the provinces second and all india federation consisting of provinces and princes was establishment was established or uh, uh, means provision being given for that powers of the center and provinces were divided into three parts by, by federal list provincial list and concurrent list and provided diarchy at the center federal subjects were divided into reserve subject and transport subject and residual powers were given to the viceroy so guys these were the important questions for all the important acts of your chapter one that if you are preparing the textbooks of Lakshmi Kant. So this is was this 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 chapter was known as constitutional development of India. So I hope that with these questions you will be able to answer any question being asked on this chapter. So as always I'm going to ask you one question. Question was that which X was uh, also known as X for um, the <clears throat> Responsible government establishment in India. So, I will say the responsible government and official India. So, if you want to see channel, then subscribe to the channel and your friends share. And if you really like this video, then do like it. So, very soon we will meet in the one of the coming lectures. Till then, take care and bye bye.